All right, so this is EDP and past paper, 2016. I have from 20, well, 2005 to 2016, and we'll be going through all of them because most of the questions on the exam will be theory. Maybe two thirds of it is theory and the other one third practical. So remember, you need to know both content, right? All right, so number one says, read the passage below and then answer the questions which follow, right? It says, Mary, a high school student, needed to purchase an electronic device for storing and processing data. She was uncertain whether to purchase a small portable microcomputer with a screen that closes over the keyboard or a device that has a screen on which the user can write using a stylus. One major requirement was that it should have a high capacity self-contained storage device. So of course you're going to be indicating one word which may be used to replace each of the underlined phrases. So look at A, the underlined phrase for A. Mm -hmm. An electronic device for storing and processing data is what? Mm -hmm. A computer. Look at B, a small portable microcomputer with a screen that closes over the keyboard. Laptop or notebook. Good? C, device that has a screen on which the user can write using a stylus. Tablet. Tablet. Indeed. D, a high capacity self-contained storage device. And that's a hard drive. It's a hard drive. Once you hear high capacity self-contained, just the words alone in that phrase tell you it's um, a hard drive that they're talking about. All right, number two is talking about cloud storage. It asks you to define cloud storage. Cloud storage is a cloud computing model in which the data is stored on remote services accessed from the internet. Google Drive is a perfect example of cloud storage. Yeah. So you know you can have your documents saved online, but you know you need internet to access it. And you can have people access the data as well once you give them permission. Sometimes people will send a Google file to you, but because they didn't give you the permission to open it, you can't open it. So it has, it has to have some form of permission, um, TikTok or something like that, you know, for you to access the file. All right? There are several definitions for cloud storage. That is just one. Another one is a way for businesses and consumers to save data securely online so it can be accessed anytime from any location anywhere right and it can be easily shared with those who are granted permission just like i said earlier another definition is that it is a service model in which data is maintained managed backed up remotely and made available to users over a network i know that's typically the internet right it can be done in an intranet form, you know, within an organization as well. Good? B says identify one portable storage media. Thumb drive. CD, even though CDs is getting next thing, but yes, CDs is one. DVD, yeah. Floppy, but that's who uses it. Nobody uses floppy these days, but yes, it is one. It is one. We can't rule it out, it is one. So if you see it in a multiple choice question, count it. Okay. All right, so that's number two. Number three says, state one situation where each of the following features is used in a document. A, header. All right, so when do we use a header? A header is used when you want to display information at the top of the pages of a, do of a document. B is asking you when do you use a footnote? Bottom. At the bottom, right? And it's a way of 
adding extra information outside of the main document. So it's not within the main document, it's outside of the main document. That's the purpose of a footnote. It is pretty much similar to a footer and, yeah. So footnote and footer, pretty much similar. Please, know the difference. Both of them, yes, which is a similarity, is found at the bottom, but what is the difference? Please, go and find out the difference between a footnote and a footer. All right? End note. End note is like footer too. But end note you find it at the end of the document itself. Footnote you find at the end of each page. Right? Good. All right. So let me move on to number four, which says you are to read the following passage carefully and then answer the questions which follow. Jason had an assignment for school. The day before the assignment was due, he realized that he had not done it. Jason knew his brother had done a similar assignment two years previously. Jason found his brother's assignment, made a few minor adjustments, and submitted it as his own. Mm -hmm. A. What is the term used to describe what Jason did? Mm -hmm. And you are pretty much correct. Plagiarism. Right? B. Ask you now, list two guidelines that Jason should have followed to avoid this, to avoid plagiarism. Um, he would have to say that it's his brother's work or... So he you'll have to reference him, yeah. right? Yeah. Reference his brother. Good. Or he could just put it in his a own reference word page. Yeah. He could put it in his in own word, as you say. That's the second way, right? Yeah. So once you give credit to the person's information that you use, you're good to go. Once you put it in your own words, you're good to go, yeah. right? That's why you avoid plagiarism. Yeah. Yeah, I had to give credit to TVJ. I can't yeah. use TVJ's things without giving them credit. So yes, pretty much what I did earlier. I had to give them credit. Can't pass it on as my own. Yes. Good. Where am I now? Five? Number five. Five A. What is meant by each of the following symbols used in document preparation? Five A one. The arrow pointing down means to what? Go lower down the page. Am I correct? Uh-huh. Lower down the page, you go lower down the page. Good. The one. No, go down. Further down. Yes, you will present it to get down there. Yes. 5A2. The balloon with the arrow, what does it mean? Right, so move to where I indicate you to move it to. Very good. 5A3 with that square bracket, the left side square bracket, what does it mean? I know you'll forget. New paragraph. New paragraph. NP, NP means new paragraph. The slash the side two double slash means new paragraph. That also means new paragraph. That's square bracket. Right? Please make a note of it. Right. Oh, the one that come like me to say that you should go. Yeah. Right, the three the, the oh, yeah. three lines going straight on me to a line left. Yes. 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 Right. right. And sometimes people mix up that one the, with the, the double slash slant double slash one, which means new yes. paragraphs. So you have to be careful. Then again, the context in which it is used, you know what to do. Yes. When we look at some practical paper, you'll see some of them and you'll know exactly what to do. All right, the last one, the pi star, the pi sign. That's the pi sign. Yes, it means to delete, right, or to remove. Good, and I remember mine. Yeah. All right. All right. So those are the answers. B says you are to expand each of the following abbreviations. S H D. Yes. W L. Will. Double D is wood. Double L is will. A C account. B N bin. Nice. 
That, oh, but it's right there. All right. <laughs> All right, so it says, number six says, carefully examine the diagram below and then answer the questions which follow. A says, list files, the files shown in the diagram above in chronological order based on the metadata, which is the date modified, right? Mm -hmm. So look at the document library. Look at it, look, looking at it. So what is modified by the date? Chronological order, yes. yes. So it means the most recent document mm -hmm. would be at the top. Wow. Good? Yes. All right, so we have breadfruit recipe, which is April 1, 2016. Yes. Balance sheet, which is March 15, 2014. Invitation, January 10, 2015. Flyer, June 20, 2015. Addresses, August 1, 2013. So in chronological order, metadata, date modified, which would come first? first. Twenty sixteen, which is breadfruit recipe, yes. April one, twenty sixteen. So it would still be at the top. Which one would follow? So that's invitation, January. No, June flyer. June would come, would be more recent than January, right? So it would be followed by flyer, June twenty twenty fifteen. Then invitation, January 10, 2015. Mm -hmm. Then you'd have March. balance sheet, which is March 15, 2014. Then addresses, August 1, 2013. And the answer is right there. So in chronological order, that's what it would be. The most recent would appear first. Okay? All right. B says list four types of metadata other than data modified. So what is metadata though? Metadata is what you use to identify a particular document. What do we use to identify documents? File name. name. File name. Mm -hmm. What else? The folder. The folder in which it is saved or located. What else? Size. The size. What else? That's it? Time. The type. All right, so the name, the size, the folder, the type. The name, the type, the name, the size, the folder, and the date modified, right? That's your metadata. All right, number seven says there are spelling errors in the passage below. Read the passage carefully and then answer the questions which follow. And of course, you will have English type things in your EDP and documents because it deals with document preparation. So you need to know how to spell, you need to know your grammar and all of those things. So things like that will come and they will put it in multiple choice questions just the same. All right, so it says, I have been impressed by the structure and content of the cave and in particular, the flexibility to offer various combinations of breadth and depth. <laughs> the inclusion of core courses is also helpful in preparing students in higher education in an international context. In examining the syllabus content and duration of K courses, we have concluded that the qualifications resulting from two subject courses are comparable to to GCE Advanced Level 2, level, that is, in accounting, <laughs> bi biology, chemistry, French, history, literature is in English, mathematics, physics, and Spanish, and should be acceptable, acceptable entry qualifications for most degree programs. Good, so it says now circle the errors in the passage, but we're going to speak about them instead of circle it. And then it says you have to write the corrected version for each of the errors circled in A above. And then they give you an example. So level, what's incorrectly spelled, right? Yes. Am I correct? We should have only have one L at the beginning and one L at the end. Which other error did you find? Subject. Subject, we should be subject. 
Combination. Combination, which should be combinations, right? Yes. Impressed, which should have been not a T but a ED, an ED, right? Programs should have two M. If you're going to spell it out like that, it should have two M's, right? You only use one M if you're going to cut off the ES. Mm -hmm. If you're going to have just P R O M G. P R O G R A N, leave it there. If you're going to use the one, it's, I think it's English and American spelling. Yeah. One is English, yes. One is British, one is um, American. Right. So those were the errors that you, you, you would find. And of course, when you're rewriting it, you would have written it using the corrected um, version, the correct words. All right. Number eight says 8a state two examples of each of the following types of software 8a1 application software <coughs> and of course microsoft word microsoft excel microsoft powerpoint microsoft access microsoft publisher any of those could have been used What about 882 operating systems? We in here use Microsoft Windows. Give me another. Mac. Mac, which Apple uses, right? And you could give me several. You have Linux, you have so many Unix, you have so many other ones that you could have used. But these are the most common ones. So the most common ones usually come to your brain first, so you just jot those down, right? Good. 8B. Explain the difference between application software and operating system software. This question comes so many times. You guys should be able to answer this slide. Right? Application software is what we use on a daily basis. The apps, right? So our Word, our Excel, even the internet that we go on, those things. Good. Your operating system now. Those are the, what we call the interface between your hardware, your software. You know, you know, you have to go through your operating system before you can use your application yes. system, right? Yes. Software. Right, there, yeah. right. From you turn it on, it boots. And once it starts booting, then of course everything is in place. You won't even see any application without going through your operating system software. That's the first thing you have to go through. Right, so the difference is that the application software consists of programs designed to make users more productive and or assist them with personal tasks. You can write this in different ways. Good. Operating system, on the other hand, serves as the interface between the user, the application software, and the computer's hardware. Good. Number nine says, identify two types of documents used in data processing. Right here you'll see three, because I just list all of them, but you can use any of the two, any of the three, any two of the three can be used. All right, so you have manual data processing, that's your regular filing cabinet system, you know that already. You know, your electronic one is the computer, and you have the mechanical software. All right, number, mechanical data processing. Number 10, in the table below, Indicate what type of display should be used to produce each task. The first one has been done for you. And for invitation, that's a simple display. So you have simple display and advanced display. And basically, you are to indicate which it falls under, which, which, which document falls under simple or advanced. So invitation is a simple display document. Flow chart, what do you think? Advanced? Yes, it is. Menu? Simple. Newsletter? Advanced. Leaflet? Advanced. It is like, it, it's prepared like a newsletter, so it will fall under, right? Under advanced. And columnar? Simple, right? Columnar is simple. All right. All right, so that's it for 26.